A career in the civil service within the first few months gave me knowledge of a poet named Edward Martin. Now, Edward Martin was a very important man. Edward Martin was an African, an African Guyanese. Well, that time not Guyanese because you we were British Guyana. Edward Martin wrote in the 1800s. I, there is some confusion as to when he was born because I saw different printed documents the same his birth and his death. You know, they didn't co coincide with even some of his work because one source says he died in 1861 and another source says that he wrote a particular poem in 1866. So that's a very good field for investigation. But I found Egbert uh, Martin, known as Leo, also known as Leo, I found him one day whilst I was playing a hooky from work, which I did every morning. I mean, when you work at the Prime Minister's office, that's what you do. You go in, you sign on, and then you head across to the archives and get between all the old newspapers and, and enjoy the day among the dust and the information, the knowledge. So. Down there, I discovered that this Leo was the first known published Guyanese poet. So I said, wow, this is fantastic. I must investigate this. Well, I haven't done so yet, but others may have because there's a printed volume of his work. And I remember going through this volume. And in this volume, there was a poem. A particular poem that I loved very much. I love it very much. I'd like to share it with you. Because as I discuss, or as we discuss, the development of poetry, we must also discuss the poem itself. Or we must pay attention to the poem itself. And this I'm going to give you now is Egbert Martin's The Arms House. He has a traditional form in his expression of poetry. And the answer is very significant. He's supposed to have been, Edward Martin was supposed to have been bedridden. That's from one source. He was supposed to have been bedridden. And this poem caught my attention. The arms house. We know the arms house we call the arms. And this is what he says. Here's the graveyard of human ambition, the storehouse of failure and woes, the total of life's long ambition, the aggregate brought to close. Where no prospect on earth lies before, and the past is an agent of ill, where the striving must cease evermore, though solely against heart and will. Oh, how many jest and the anguish they hear of, but yet never know, making light of the spirits that languish when memory is full of overflow. When the arrow is shot, spent and lion, when the wing of the bird droops in the hand, when the heart knows its sorrow and sigh, when the body grows, groans onto its bands. The only belief that can brighten comes forth from the cause of Christ's death. Tis the ray whose effulgence will lighten. Tis the breeze with the balm of poignant breath. Here are many spent arrows and broken. Here are birds with the winds swept and weak. Here are hearts wearing miseries token. Here are bodies that silently speak. They speak in the language of feeling, that eloquent, voiceless feel whose dew on the continent stealing makes the heart of the gazer feel. How much it is to suffer to mortals, to suffer on earth's callous sod, ere death hopes the silvery portals that leads the soul to its God. We should ever condone the position of them by, misfor by misfortune oppressed, for poverty bringeth contrition, the hearts that are wild and unrest. 
Here's the graveyard of human ambition, the storehouse of failure and woes, the total of life's long addition, the aggregate brought to a close. Edward Martin.